Everything and where in the faint is wake. Good morning, everyone. Just getting everything together. Cool. I think we're ready. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, if you're out there, and good morning, anyone who's watching on replay, or good afternoon, whenever, good evening, whenever you're going to go. <laughs> Welcome back to another Kitchen Live and the last one for this summer. Um, we're going to have a break in July and August, but then come back September, October for some autumn and Halloween recipes. But um, today we're still very much firmly in summer mode, although the weather has taken a, a turn this weekend. We've had a beautiful hot week all week here in um, the Cotswolds, and yesterday and today has gone very dark and <laughs> rainy. So when I planned these earlier in the week, it was a perfect idea to um, go with a mini heat wave that we were having. But um, yeah, that's it. It doesn't matter. You can have ice cream all year round. Ice cream is fantastic. So uh, I love it. And it seems that talking to everybody on the page at the moment, everybody ice cream or cool watermelon is everybody's favourite way of keeping refreshed. So, yeah, um, I'm just giving a good morning, Barbara. How are you? I hope you're well. Um, so, this today is um, I'm going to do black forest ice cream sandwiches, but the base of this, the ice cream side, actually is such a really simple, easy recipe. Um, and you can adapt it to whatever flavour combination that you want. So um, you can you can make this ice cream just as a standalone ice cream, or you can make it as an ice cream sandwich, or for duping, or for Sundays. But ultimately, the base of the ice cream that we're doing today is the simplest, quickest ice cream you'll ever make. It's about five minutes. Um, and you can use it, like I say, for any flavour combination. So, as usual, I shall just let you know what's going to happen. So, we're going to be making a black forest ice cream sandwich. Um, the base of the sandwich, the top and the bottom, that's going to sandwich our ice cream, is a chocolate cakey brownie layer. So, it's not full brownie and it's not full cake. It's sort of a bit in between, so it gives it a little bit of structure. They were baked last night and they're currently in the freezer. So I'll grab those out in a moment and I'll let you know what they're all about. We've also got um, for our ice cream layer, we've got some condensed, sweetened condensed milk and heavy or double cream. That's all essentially you need for it. We've also got a little bit of chocolate, um, some vanilla bean paste, and a little drop of alcohol. I'll explain that, but you don't need that. And um, some black cherries, uh, well, black cherries from the garden. So we're going to be putting those through. And there's also a little bit of cherry compote in the fridge. So. Let's just grab these. So I have this left over. This is a Bon Maman 
um, cherry compote that we're going to be using the juice to ripple through the ice cream. Uh, double cream, you, this is 600 ml, but we're only going to use half of that, so the small pots are nice and easy. And then this is sweetened condensed milk, 150 ml of. And then our brownie layers, these have been wrapped overnight. We'll grab one out in a moment, but these are the brownie layers. They're quite thin and they're going to be forming our sandwich layers. So, first up then, last night I made these. These are really simple, I'll pop the recipe in here. Um, there's no melted butter or anything in these brownie layers like you would normally do for brownie. These were all in one, um, straight in the bowl and whiz it up with the hand whisk. This was um, just butter, sugar, eggs, plain or all-purpose flour, a drop of cocoa powder and all mixed together. The key being the butter was really, really soft. So we could put it straight in and mix it through. We didn't have to cream anything. So it was quite a, a soft mixture. So I'm just going to pop those to the side for the moment. Um, oh, sorry. And they were baked in an eight-inch square pan. So we want like this. Um, just with some greaseproof paper in, the mixture on the top, and then I put another layer of greaseproof on top just to stop the brownie from rising too much as it was baking to try and keep a relatively flat um, flat top. And this, the, the bottom side is nice and smooth. Morning, Jenny. And the top actually is quite smooth and quite flat, and it's got something that our ice cream is going to stick to. So, but our ice cream. So, this is a no churn ice cream. So, we, we don't need to put it into the freezer and be getting it in and out and mixing it up and breaking the ice crystals down. Um, it's not one that you need an ice cream maker for. It's not one that you need a stand mixer for at all. You can do this all by hand if you want. It's so, so simple. So, it takes about five minutes. Um, so, but I'll sort of explain as we go through why it works because most people you'll see in, um, on recipes and on websites and on television, people are making a custard and then they're chilling it or they're putting it into a churner and you get that really nice smooth creamy ice cream like a soft scoop that we'll, we'll, we'll get. And that is obviously the most traditional and most lovely way because you get all the creaminess from the the, the cream and everything that's in there, but the no churn butter, uh, sorry, the no churn ice cream is going to give you um, quite a reasonably good um, sort of alternative to that without having to spend money on an ice cream maker. I've always wanted one. The ones that you see, the big ones on the countertop, but they're, they're quite big. Uh, they've got the chiller in it, so it's doing all that churning and filling at the same time, and then you just pop it into the freezer. The smaller ones that you'll see um, that look just like a bowl, again, they're doing pretty similar. You have to find room in the freezer to freeze the bowl first. You put everything in and it churns and then you pop it into the freezer. They're probably, if you're making just ice cream on and off, that's going to be the most, um, if you want an ice cream maker, that's going to be your most cost effective. Um, you can also get things like uh, the freezer bowls to go on stand mixers. I know KitchenAid do one. I'm not sure if Ken would do one. And again, it's just a, uh, a double wall bowl that you pop into the freezer and then you mix everything together with your custard on the stand mixer. But there's no freezing with this one. <laughs> not until we've made it. Um, it's just straight in and... Um, and then into the freezer, however you want to do it. So to start off with, our two base ingredients are our milk cream and our condensed milk. So I'm going to start off just with the milk cream. And we're using double rather than single because it's got that high fat content. We're looking for that really smooth, creamy texture when it's in, uh, sorry, when it's frozen. So... 
Double cream is best. You can use an extra thick double cream. Whipping cream has a higher fat content as well. That can work. You don't want to go anything lower than a, a double or a heavy cream. For 300 milliliters, I don't say that's about half of this tub, or if you've got the smaller ones, I think it's about the size of a smaller tub. And start, that's all we're going to do with the cream for the moment. We're going to pop it onto the mixer and we're just going to start whisking it very, very gently with the balloon whisk until it forms soft peaks. We're not looking for it to get thick and heavy like if you are whipping, really whipped up. We just want it to be smooth and soft. So a moment or two just as it goes through. That one. The next thing we're going to do then is fold in our uh, sweetened condensed milk. And the reason this no churn recipe works is it's quite a lot down to this little guy here. Um, now, the whole thing is we're not adding any extra sugar either to this because the condensed milk is actually quite high in sugar as it is. And um, it's also because it's been condensed, a lot of the moisture, the water and the wetness has been evaporated from the milk. So we're not, um, when it freezes, that's sort of eliminated and we're not going to get an icy sorbet sort of texture. It's this that gives us the, the smooth, that creaminess. Um, combined with our double cream when it's all together. So sweeten so we don't have to add any extra sugar and the condensed bit, that's the key. They're the two things that are really going to make this, um, the, the really make the no turn ice cream work. So I'm just going to pop this up a little bit quicker. Come on. Okay, you can do this by hand with a balloon whisk or with a, a hand mixer like this. This is probably the quickest to be quite honest. But this is the noisiest. <laughs> ice cream but that's sort of the consistency that we're we're looking for so i can see here i've got a little bit just hanging off it's not dripping down loose, but it's still quite nice and soft over whipping it when it freezes it's just again yeah, it's going to make it hard it's going to make it solid and we're not going to get that nice um creamy texture to it so into my whipped soft peat double cream i'm going to add my condensed milk. So like I say, this is sweetened condensed milk, so we don't need any extra sugar. And um, a lot of that moisture from the milk has been evaporated off. This is going to give us a nice, smooth, creamy texture. It also means this is the key why we don't need to churn it, because we are not having to, the churning really is to break down the ice crystals forming as the ice cream um, freezes and um, having been condensed and having eliminated a lot of the uh, liquid moisture in our in our mix that's going to cause it to 
our rice crystals, we don't need to do it. So we can just put it in and leave it straight away. So our condensed milk is in here with our double cream. Other things we're then going to do, and you don't have to do that. Um, I'm just going to put a drop of the vanilla bean paste in. Somebody asked me this week, do I need to use vanilla bean paste? You don't. You can use vanilla extract. You can use vanilla essence if that's what you prefer. Um, you can get vanilla bean paste for all varying um, cost levels. This one, I think, is about four or five pound in the supermarket. Off the shelf. You can get, um, it's a lot. I mean, there's a hundred grams in here and this lasts me a, a good couple of months because I'm just using excuse me a drop every time you can buy more expensive ones obviously vanilla is really expensive it's, it's so it is going to be and it's depending on where you're getting it from where it's grown where it's sourced um, and the ethic behind it as well so uh, you don't have to use it I just like it and especially with ice cream or or just vanilla butter creams because you get that nice little speckle the fleck through your um through your mixture so i'm just going to add a tiny little pop squeeze and then the last bit before we start adding fruit is alcohol now you don't have to add the alcohol if you don't want to especially if you're making these for children but alcohol also helps because it's got a lower freezing point, so when we add it to here, it's, um, it helps just, just a tablespoon helps keep that ice cream smoother, creamier. It means it's easier to scoop, so when you put it into the freezer, you haven't got to take it out um, for about 15 minutes beforehand to defrost a little bit, so it's soft to scoop. So you want something that's just going to help with that freezing point and this is where the alcohol comes in and you could use anything if you were using a if you wanted to make just a plain vanilla you might add a, like a bourbon whiskey or something like that like a, a like a bourbon an american bourbon or um things like grand marnier or uh for an orange flavored one or um chimera if you're doing coffee or anything coffee based um creme de menthe if you a mint one just to add it we're not adding a lot of alcohol to it we're not adding like shots and shots it's just enough to help that temperature that freezing point lower and help keep the ice cream nice and soft uh, this one for black forest ultimately i'd put in maybe like a cherry uh, kirsch or a cherry brandy or something like that i don't have any but um Similarly, you can use uh, Chambord, which is a black raspberry liqueur, which would be nice, or even just something like doing chocolate ice cream, a chocolate um, um, liqueur, like a Bailey's or something, um, will just give you enough fruit there. So I'm going to add a little bit of the Chambord. This is where. Christmas alcohol <laughs> comes in handy. So I'm adding a tablespoon to strengthen. And so you don't have to do this, you just then need to probably just let the ice cream sit for a little bit longer before you scoop it if you're just doing it as a regular ice cream or if you're doing it as the sandwiches, just let them, you know, you can cut them and then just let them settle down for a little bit before you start eating them. <laughs> So that's our double cream with our condensed milk and our shot of alcohol in here. So we're just going to fold it back This time, so it's sort of on the verge of stiff. Uh, sorry, soft, stiff peak. Um. So. And this then is 
is your base for your alcohol. This is, sorry, the base for your ice cream with or without the alcohol. This is what you can then use as um, just a standard thing. So I've done in the past, let me just get rid of it. I've done in the past like a mint chop one, so um, I've put a shot of peppermint extract in um, and then chopped, roughly chopped some chocolate that we're going to do for this one and pop that through and it's a bit of green food colouring. Um, on the website there's also like a chocolate marshmallow one where we've made um, a chocolate ice cream base um, and have folded through melted chocolate, a little bit of cocoa powder. If you add do the cocoa powder with this, it's going to make it really stodgy because it's going to help dry it out. So if you're doing chocolate, melted chocolate um, is great, especially like um, a milk chocolate because it's got that added creamy nutty to it, the added milk. Um, and then I ran through, uh, when I put it into the tin, I laid like caramel and marshmallow fluff in there. That was cool for ice cream sundaes. Um, and then on the YouTube channel, there's like a raspberry and Oreo one where we put uh, fresh raspberries in here and then chunks of, of Oreo. In. And you just then freeze it in, if that's, all, if that's as far as you want to go with the ice cream. Um, I tend to freeze them in a, because we go one out, but they're in the top, in a low tin. And just, you can line it with cling film if you want to, and then you can take it out um, just into a loaf tin and pop it into the freezer. This will go in like about a pound, was it a two pound loaf tin? Doesn't matter, but I think it's about a pound loaf tin, so just a regular sized bread tin. Um, it keeps in the freezer for, well, as long as it is until you eat it, <laughs> or you can just. Um, it keeps for about a month really you don't want it to go any longer um it is a homemade ice cream it will it will keep for longer but it's probably better sort of after around a month so in here then we just have our base ice cream mix and it's just a thick it just looks like heavy thick whipped cream it's just like that. so before we start layering this up, we just need to finish this one off. We're going to turn this into like a black foresty sort of uh, inspired ice cream sandwich. So we've got our chocolate brownie layers from the freezer. And so that's for the chocolate cake element. And we've got our ice cream. And this is where we're going to be adding a few extra bits. So we've used the liqueur in there, and next up I'm going to just chop up some uh, dark chocolate in here, so about half a bar roughly chopped, so that's 100 grams, so that's 50 grams we're just going to roughly chop, and you don't want to chop it up rather than just put it in as the chunks because they're just... It's easier for scooping and eating. And so I'm just doing that here. Let's get rid of that. I'm just doing that down here with a sharp knife. You can buy um, in the supermarket as well. Like um, in people like Green and Blacks have. Um, chocolate cherry um, bars as well, so they'd be really nice, you could have that, or even you could go with like, um, we're going to be putting in fresh cherries, uh, but you could use dried cherries as well, so you get a really intense hit from the sour notes coming through. Oops. Here I've just got uh, sort of finely chopped shards of chocolate. Straight in there. And before I add my fresh cherries. 
cherries in from the garden. We beat the birds this year and managed to get some cherries from the garden. I've got some cherry compote. Uh, just to bomb my mum on. I don't want to add this too much because it's quite wet. But I do want to just ripple a little bit through. So I'm just going to add a spoon and to give it a touch of colour and then I'll ripple a little bit more through when we get to assembling. So just fold that through to start with. And then our cherries. So there's two ways you can do this. You can pop these into a saucepan um, uh, once you've stoned them and just simmer them down with a little bit of sugar for 10 minutes um, and they'll uh, and a, a splash of water and then they'll sort of make a like a pie cherry pie sort of starting to make a cherry pie filling um, I'm going to use them just whole like that well not whole but I'm going to use them uncooked you can use cherry pie filling I know a lot of people sort of in the states wise that you it's, a, it's more common than it is here. But these are fresh cherries and they've got their stones in obviously. So we're just going to de-stone them. And the easiest way, a little hack, is just a straw. This is a, a, a reusable straw, so it's quite strong. And you can just place your straw on top of your cherry. Oop, she says. Put your cherry on top of the straw and push through, and you'll de stone your cherry. So, I'm going to want a few of those. You can use frozen cherries as well, you can use things like frozen um, milkshake mixes, which do have a lot of um, things in here in them. So, you'll find them in obviously the freezer aisle, but normally around with the frozen fruit um, going through so it is a little messy but it's a lot easier stoning your cherries with a straw <laughs> oops i'm just gonna cherry juice if we go I'm looking for the big juicy ones And then we're going to just chop these up um, roughly, not too fine, but just into chunks, some into halves um, and things. You could do uh, with this, if you didn't want to go that far, you could use the sort of fresh strawberries or fresh raspberries or even freeze dried ones. Um, Raspberries do work really well, especially the fresh ones, you get the, the colour rippled through. So I've got two, I've got about 15 cherries there, so I'm just going to get rid of these. And just stoning them like that does help cut down on the mess and less cherry juice around. And there's still some, some left, so we can freeze those. Um, next thing is just to chop through. So I want some halves. Two halves. For most of them. And then the last one to sort of just pop a little bit more into the waters. Minding your fingers. You don't want to chop them up too much, you want those nice big chunks as they come through. Just wash my hands. There we go. Morning Gina, don't worry. <laughs> nice to see you. So, 
Uh, and for anybody joining, we've made our ice cream mix, just our really simple one with our double cream and condensed milk. A little shot of liqueur in there helps the lower the freezing point, makes it nice and creamy. We've added some cho chopped dark chocolate, and we've also got a little bit of cherry compote smooth through just for a little bit of colour. And now we've just chopped the cherries from the garden. We've, we've stoned these using a straw, just with a reusable straw, just uh, holding the cherry on the end and poking, and the cherry, the cherry stone pops out the other end and it's not so messy. We've chopped the cherries in half and then also rough chopped them into quarters. And um, we're just going to add them through. Get rid of that. And just, we're now just folding everything through. Uh, might just want a few more cherries, I think. Just add, and that's the thing, you don't want too much that it's going to, when you scoop it, it's not going to be, um, you're just going to be fighting everything in there. If you think what, like a Ben and Jerry's, they have pockets of um, their filling, so, um, my favourite is fish food, so that's got little chocolate fish in and then um, pockets of marshmallow and things. So we just want something, we don't want to overdo it, but we don't, we're looking to get an, a nice piece of cherry in every bite with our chocolate. So just done a couple more, and again, that's with the straw and then pushing our cherry on the end, just to hold it with your fingers and the cherry will pop out and your, your, your the stone will pop out and your cherry is the stone. You can get a cherry stoners um, uh, if you want. So, again, I'm just going to roughly just chop these up and then pop them straight in. And we're nearly there. Fruits that I probably wouldn't use with this is something like pineapple, um, too much. Uh, definitely not the juice because it's not going to set very well. But you could go with something like a dehydrated pineapple, um, you know, the dried pineapple, yeah, or um. Pineapple chunks that have been drained from the water. Just get rid of this. Just because it's quite juicy and it just um, it's just going to counteract everything that we've put in there and, and, and the setting side of things. So, um, the things that are quite and I'm. Bananas, um, we know bananas and I are friends, but bananas this way you can make a very similar ice cream using bananas as the base. Um, and I can share those across. So we've got our ice cream, we've got that all sorted, we've got our chocolate in there as well. We've used our alcohol if you want to. You don't have to remember this is just to help bring that freezing point of the ice cream down, help it keep it smooth and a little bit easier to scoop. Just pop those out of the way. And then we're all set for assembling. So we'll just have a another look at these brownies. So these were baked last night. They are a sort of a more of a cakey brownie than a uh, a gooey fudgy brownie because we want the we want it to be uh, substantial enough to hold the ice cream um, as a sandwich and not fall apart when we're eating it. So these are baked with a very simple all-in-one butter, sugar, eggs, flour, cocoa powder recipe, um, uh, rather than having melted chocolate in them. And they were baked in an eight-inch sandwich tin. 
And with these, what I did was I lined them with a sheet on the bottom. I added our um, brownie uh, mixture and then smoothed over as flat as I can possibly do. Again, with my trusty ankle spatula. It's great for these because you can get in without sort of dragging your hands. And then I put another layer of baking parchment on the top, just laid it gently on top of the brownie. And that just helped stop it from sort of getting all lumpy and bumpy, it's raised and it's found its own way. It sort of just held it down a little bit. Um, so we get a nice flat surface on the top. So, ends up, she says, being very, very careful, something about a centimetre and a half, maybe two in depth, but it's flat on the base, obviously, and then this top here is where we've had the paper on, and we've got a few little uh, edges that are higher, but ultimately the middle bit is all the same level. And these then went into the freezer after they were cooled, wrapped in the cling film overnight, just to help that when we put this into the other tin for setting, that when we add the ice cream, it's not just going to be soaked straight into the brownie. So being put in the um, freezer overnight really, really helped. Uh, because these are quite low, uh, they're not very deep, um, I'm not going to assemble in here. I'm going to go in with a deeper square pan. So these are eight inch. Uh, we might just have to do a little trimming on the corners because these are rounded and those are our square corners. So, but before we do that, we need to line our tin. We don't want to put ice cream and the brownie layer straight into this because when it freezes we're just never going to get it out um like i say if you're making this as a straightforward ice cream put it in a loaf tin you can line it in if you want or you can just because you'll be scooping it out you can just leave it straight in the tin or into a tupperware tin um a tupperware container so you can put a lid on it or if you like us and you hoard hold ice cream containers for everything, um, for bits and pieces, pop it in one of them. Make sure, obviously, it's properly clean. But for our brand, for our ice cream sandwiches, we're going to line it with a uh, clamper or plastic wrap. Or if you've got a uh, beeswax uh, paper that you can line a tin with, that's perfect. Anything that's sort of going to help you lift it out and also be able to peel away from the ice cream sandwich. I'm going to use cling film on this, so I'm going to lay it again, one this way, and I'll turn it round and I'll lay it the other way. So we've got those two overlapping pieces and we can just use them as a uh, handle to get out. So I'm just going to, cling film and I are not the greatest of friends, but we need one of them wrap things where you just clunk on the end. <laughs> it comes, cuts it for you. So just in, and this is a loose base one as well, so that's really handy. And one more. It's gone very, very windy here. <laughs> And the rain's lashing. I'm sorry if you can hear the wind carriage. Um, just in. Try and get it as smooth as possible. Plastic wrapped lined paper tin ready for our brownie. So I'm going to take one layer here and just I think I'm going to have to just chop off the corners ever so slightly.
just to get it in because they're not ideally you would do it in the same tin as you paint in uh but i only have one of these but two of two of these and this at nine o'clock last night was the easiest way for painting <laughs> um i do have a knife Okay. So I'm just going to literally, because I've got the round corners, I'm just going to just chop off um, angles just to fit it in. And actually, I can show you, you'll see that this is more of a, a dense brownie rather than a, uh, than a gooey brownie. Because this is obviously what we're looking for. It gives us that structure when we're doing the ice cream sandwich. So fingers crossed. Yay, that all fits in. And I'm just going to check my corners that I've not dragged any of the wrap down with it so my ice cream isn't sticking. To those. That's all we need to do for that bit. The next bit is the is, is filling everything with this. So again, it's just this thick, looks like thick double cream mixture, but this is the one. It's got that condensed milk that's going to give it the sweetened uh, taste. It's going to help us keep it nice and smooth and creamy because it's been condensed down the water. The moisture in the in the ingredients has been in the milk has been evaporated out, so we're going to have a nice creamy mixture. It's not going to be icy um, and sorbet like. And as you remember, this that's what helps us make it no churn. So I'm just again wrong handed, <laughs> just going to put this in. Let's start off with a good dollop. First, this is a little bit in there, but let's just smooth it out and just gently ease it through. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I put those extra cherries in because there's a really nice amount in here now. And when it's cut, it will be really, you'll get locked in. And still a little bit left, so add that to it. Like so you don't necessarily need any extra sugar because that condensed milk is already sweetened and um, or it's already it is actually quite sweet if you've ever tasted condensed milk. And you need condensed rather than evaporated because the condensed has gone that one step further. Um, and it's just that really thick. The evaporated milk is, is just not enough. So you need, it has to be the condensed milk. Um, I didn't usually find it in the baking aisle. I know in my supermarket, sometimes it's with like the tinned fruit. Um, you might find it there. If you uh, buy the carnation, uh, caramel, the dolce de leche, sort of thing, it's usually next to that or near the ready made custards. <laughs> so we have in here now our ice cream mix all smoothed over. And that's the beauty of the angled palette knife as well. Because it's quite deep um, of a pan and I need to get that flat actually. I've been able to do that without dragging anything through and without dragging my fingers through. So that's almost ready to go. The last bit I do want to do is just add a little bit more of the cherry compote just to um, uh, 
go through on the top. So if you're just doing this for normal ice cream, you could do this with a, like a chocolate sauce or something, and then just swirl, actually, swirl it through, and you'll get that nice look on the top. So I'm just gonna just do that again. And swirl it, just finish off smoothing down with the spoon. So that's almost there. Our last bit obviously is to put our last our second piece of brownie on top. This is quite soft. So what I suggest is that, um, is that this goes into the freezer now for about two hours because then that ice cream will start to firm up and it'll have some structure. Then put your final piece of brownie or cake layer on the top. It hasn't completely frozen at that point, which means it's going to give um, everything something all to stick together to. Um, but also it means that when you put it in, it's not just going to sink through our ice cream layer. If we put this in now, um, this is really, it is soft, even though it's got some structure we can see with the, the thickness of the cream. It is, however, just going to sink through. So this goes into the freezer. I think I might need to make some room. This will go into the freezer for about two hours, and then, then I'll take it out, just check, see how it's doing, and then I'll put the that top piece on. And you want to leave it for a good eight hours is probably best if not if you can do it overnight it's even better then you can take it out and once it's all really frozen solid take it out and cut it up into the bars best to do it then rather than when you want to serve it because it will get as it sets in the freezer like anything if you have ice cream in there for a while it when you go and scoop it it's rock hard so let it freeze overnight or for at least eight hours, then chop it up and you can just then um, put the bars into, into a box, into a Tupperware container, just layer them up in that. Um, and then you've got them again, really. <laughs> you haven't got to do any chopping or fighting with it. So this will go in now. And um, that's it. I will... I'll, I'll, Pop some bits and pieces up later when it's uh, when it's frozen, and then obviously next week. But the the ice cream base that really simple five minutes double cream and condensed milk can be adapted for pretty much anything. Um, it does just means because of the fat content and because it's got no moisture. The moisture has been evaporated from the condensed milk. You're not having to go back to the freezer every hour, scoop it and stir it and break up those ice crystals because we've sort of eliminated as much of the water content as we possibly can. And then say so that our alcohol is just a, if you want to add it, if you're doing it for adults, fine, it's great. If you're not an alcohol person or you're doing it, you don't have to have it. It's just that that will help bring the freezing point of the ice cream down and it'll just be easier to scoop. Um, but you can you can leave it out and you just probably need to then bring your ice cream out of the freezer for a, sort of a little bit longer, maybe 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> um, thanks. Can I on? Go, go to the start, Gina. <laughs> I do explain it a little bit more. Um, the, the brownie uh, layers, I will put up um, the uh, recipe for that, but it's ever so simple. It's an all-in-one uh butter sugar eggs plain flour um uh cocoa powder a little bit of cocoa powder and a half a teaspoon of um baking powder there's no amount of chocolate in those brands because we don't want them to be massively gooey because we want them to have some structure to hold this lot in place but i will pop it up and yeah you can go ahead the ice cream flavors are so many like i say um there's one on the website that I did um, at Christmas with uh, a mince pie flavoured one. So you can do all sorts. And what I did with that was, again, the same base. I put some mixed spices through, um, some cinnamon, 
Thank you, Barbara. Uh, some cinnamon through, and then um, a shot of brandy. So that helps keep it uh, nice and soft with that. I also then just had some uh, mince pies left over and some mint meat. So mixed a little bit of mint meat through, swelled it through, and then broke up the mince pies that we had left over. Um, so you've got big chunks of like that sweet buttery pastry um, in the in the centre as well as the um, as well as the, uh, the mint meat. So. Um, it is just so, so simple. Um, and you haven't got to buy an ice cream maker. I tell you what, an ice cream maker is still at the top of my list, but there are so many gadgets in this kitchen. You don't need another one. But um, give it a go. Let me know, you know, as usual, if you've got any questions or any flavour recommendations or anything like that. Um, i really love to. If you search online, there's loads, and especially on Pinterest. If you hit up Pinterest, there is so many no churn ice cream recipes and you can also take traditional recipe flavors as well and and convert them over to no churn so if you see a recipe flavor that you really like you could do it with this as well so uh yeah go give it a go i <laughs> think it's, it's literally you don't have to do it by, with the sand mix or the hand mix so if you've got a, a balloon whisk or um an old sort of egg beater whisk, you can do that. The main key point is getting that full cream, the soft peaks before adding everything. And then just once you've added everything, is taking it up a little bit again. It's a bit like the no-bake cheesecake in that way, is we don't want to over whip anything because it'd be too thick, um, or too stiff or slackened. So it's just getting that balance, balance right in the middle. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get this in the freezer. I need to clear some room. But thank you so much for joining me for the last ten weeks. It's been um, it's been really good fun. I've really enjoyed it during lockdown. Um, next week we are um, here in the UK. We're allowed out. Well, or, you know, we're allowed to meet up with family again. Hopefully, so it's my brother's fortieth. So I'll be definitely baking for that. And. Um, it's, it's exciting, but yeah, I'm going to come back um, uh, July and August, getting your brain cells working, things that I want to do, and then we'll come back in September with some autumn and Halloween recipes, and then we will be coming back as well before Christmas, in the run-up for Christmas, I've got some really exciting ideas to do for then, but I can't talk about Christmas just yet because we're not in July until next year. Yeah, and it's too soon. Um, if there is anything that you really fancy uh, me having to go out, do drop me a line, drop me a message. Join the Facebook group as well. We're going to try and do things that I'm going to be doing a couple of little lives um, over the, the course into September, probably on a Friday morning um, because I... I've just got all this holiday from work, so I'm having every Friday off for a while. Yay! Uh, so I'll probably be doing some things in there, but more of like a Q&A, a bit like we're talking about the vanilla, the different thoughts, etc., and what we can do with that. I just want to say thank you. Um, I hope that everybody's all still safe and well. Keep looking after yourselves and everybody and each other, and um, have a lovely rest of your Sunday. I will show you this guy later when he's all set. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure and I shall see you very soon. Take care. Bye.